Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 42 of Solar Civilization, and today we start with another launch of my Odin launch vehicle, a vehicle I've been launching a lot recently because, um, well, I've had a lot of heavy payloads, and this is pretty much my best candidate for reusability, just because it's simple and easy, because the whole main stage just goes to orbit, and we know from uh, previous experimentation that those boosters would land safely in the ocean just next to the KSC, so it probably would be um, a good idea to reuse them. So yeah. Anyway, um, this is taking my, uh, the uh, final spacecraft in my fleet of Duna-bound vehicles. Um, and fleet is the right word, because this is a military spacecraft. It will be carrying some fighters, which aren't equipped with it right now, but this is the core. Um, it is attached with some... it's got some cool things on it, which I'll... you'll see in a minute when I detach those fairings. Um, but yeah, uh, as we're having a base out around Duna, and we've had some, uh, worrying things we found in, um found in Kerbin orbit, we're, uh, we're gonna try to def make sure that, um, the base is secure and defended well from uh, any potential nefarious evil people. Um, so yeah, the best way to keep people safe is to surround them with weaponry. Um, that's, uh, actually not a great way. But anyway, um, I think it'll be cool, and I do love BD Armory, so this could be a little bit of fun, a little bit of, a bit, a little bit of, a little bit of pseudo-storytelling. Um, so yeah, you can see on top here, uh, We've got a weird looking thing. Those um, extremities are attached to a robotic hinges and will unfold to reveal what they truly are in a little bit. Um, but right now it's just a matter of getting to orbit. And this is one of the heavier payloads this uh, Odin vehicle has taken to orbit. So it will be a properly uh, decent um, uh, test of reusability, I guess. Um, because it needs to be able to land with uh, you know fairly little fuel for it to you know, make sense. Anyway, let's attach this and take a look. Um, it's got a bunch of solar panels. Um, it it did just get knocked by the uh, space uh, by the uh, Odin vehicle just there, which was um, I don't know. It was it, it was worrying me because I didn't really know what was going on, but it's fine. But let's get this out of the way nonetheless um, using its reaction control system. Um, although I'm thinking of replacing that with just a reaction wheel, given that reaction wheels are lighter than those vernier thrusters. But anyway, let's unfold these extremities. These are little uh, little fighter hangers, um, which I have designed out of B9 parts mainly, and some Infernal Robotics hinges. They unfold to provide a little bit of protection for our fighters, just in case there was um, some sort of attack on the station. Because, uh, well, it has armor around the back, and kind of... It basically, it armors where the... Uh, if you remember the Scorpion fighter from a couple of episodes ago, it has kind of armor around the sides. So that coupled with this, Will provide actually quite a nice, um, you know, quite a nice, like fully armored little bit for the spacecraft, which I think could be cool, um, because then it, it's just a little protected from any potential attacks. And yeah, you can see these unfurl, and it just kind of uh, makes a nice look formation. So as you have probably guessed, it will be taking four fighters out to Duna, um, because four seems like a good number, uh, and because that's. Just, yeah, it seems pretty logical. Um, and I don't want to take too many, because I think the fighters are relatively heavy. I think they're five tons each, so uh, four's an extra 20 tons, which is quite a lot. But, uh, yeah, this is the uh, military spacecraft, which will be outfitted and sent out to Duna to, you know, um, protect our oil interests. I mean, um, to protect our people. He smiled. Um, anyway, uh, we should probably bring that uh, military craft probe back, which is, of course, the uh, Odin vehicle. I do like how that formation looks. It, I'm not really, it's not really a much of a shape, but I just think it looks kind of, uh, kind of nice. Um, but anyway, it's time to bring this back. We need to bring this vehicle back because that is, well, a kind of uh, the side mission of all of these launches to uh, reuse the vehicle. And I have reused many a vehicle um, and blown up far more. Um, I probably have like a, well, I, overall it's probably a very low percentage. But I think of these probably like, I'm not sure. I've, I think I've landed maybe. Um, I think maybe two on dry land, and then a few in the ocean successfully crashed quite a few. And then with the uh, other two-stage vehicles, I'd landed a few of them. Quite a few uh, lower stages of the Triton 1. Um, pretty sure none of the Triton 2s worked just because of various glitches in the game. And because it wasn't a great spacecraft. Uh, so I kind of uh, got rid of that. Um, but yeah, I, I've reused some. And it is difficult in Kerbal Space Program, but I'm hoping just to be able to kind of... Um, fairly effectively land these, um, <clears throat> kind of, uh, just repeatably, so I can just keep landing them. Um, but yeah, the main problem is with this is, uh, Ferrum Aerospace does not respond well to those NASA parts, so I have had to fit giant air brakes to get it to kind of drag like it should, um, 
because most uh, parts are slowed down pretty well by the atmosphere. Um, but with Faram Aerospace and these NASA parts, I don't know what it does, but it seems to not slow down at all. Like, I'll hit the ground at like a, th like a kilometer per second, which is ridiculous. Um, this does look kind of weird with that large kind of antenna looking thing on the top. That was the decoupler that goes between those nuclear engines. Uh, they were spaced just to stop uh, overheating because it does need a little more power, so I don't want to have to throttle them down for any reason. Um, but yeah, it's coming down pretty well, and we have slowed down pretty well with those air brakes. And I do like the air brakes, they also keep it um, vertical. Uh, well, maybe not this time, as you'll see, it starts to do that thing where it side slips. And then Mechjeb, I have got into one time's time accelerator so you can see how uh, how this actually panned out. And basically, uh, Mechjeb kind of auto-corrects and keeps making it worse and worse. And then, foolishly, I decide maybe I'll intervene. I'm not sure. Yeah, there, I tried using the vernier thrusters to try and slow myself down. And then keep going the wrong way and then just not doing great. Um, and then it kind of hits the ground. Oh, no, it does a flip, breaks apart. Uh, then it slows down surprisingly well on just those air brakes because they are very overpowered, which is lucky because um, they're my cheat for the broken Faram Aerospace, so I don't consider them a cheat in this scenario. But anyway, we would save some tiny bits, but probably not worth going over that mountain range to fetch. So, let's go back to space, I guess. Um, no, no, let's go back to another vehicle. Um, okay, just, oh, there we go. Um, uh, Sony Vegas does that thing where it's like, oh, black screen for a while. It's starting to really annoy me, so I will at some point get the newer one because I don't have any money right now, but I probably will in January, but it's going to be, you know, thinly stretched over all my, um, all my things. Anyway, it is seven days later, and it is time to send something to the moon again on this Odin vehicle. Um, I do have a slightly bigger version of, well, the same kind of version, just with bigger boosters for slightly heavier payloads, but this is pretty good for 50 tons, I think. I ideally wanted it to be more like 70 tons, but with reusability, it's better for about 50. Um, anyway, and those uh, those boosters almost hit each other, but they, those have started separating quite nicely. The last time they uh, stayed far away from each other, and that time they didn't, you know, collide, so that's, uh, that's good. But yeah, we are going to the moon, um, to the moon base, because it needs some new vehicles. And the government and the space agency have decided that uh, it's time to retire those old Morpheus vehicles, the one that kind of failed in the moon base and is lying in a ditch, broken and battered, and will probably just be stripped for parts at some point. I actually do have a plan to strip it for parts. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's been described as an aging spacecraft of a dead era, um, an era of one-time space trips, uh, whereas now we're looking more at bases. So we have got two vehicles in this... Uh, in this fairing. One is a return vehicle, kind of, uh, you know, for moving uh, crew to and from um, either cur the surface of Kerbin or a station. And the other one is for exploring the surface of the moon, because the main problem with the Morpheus spacecraft is they don't have a great deal of Delta V, and it is very, very expensive to jump from place to place. Um, so they weren't very good because they were pretty inefficient. So this one has got nuclear engines, it also has the ability to mine Keithane by itself, so it can be away for as long as it wants, as long as there's Keithane fields, um, and for as long as uh, it doesn't run out of life support. But yeah, it has a, a large array of experiments and everything I could possibly need, and once I've recovered that lab, um, I'll be able to use it for uh, traversing the surface of um, the moon to collect all of the science. And yeah, you can see both the vehicles here. The top one is named Centaur, and the bottom one is named Minotaur. Um, because I'm pretty uninventive, and those are cool names. And I think if they're doing basically, um, they're in the same program, they should have similar names, because, you know, these are the two vehicles that will make, um, make the, uh, make the moon base viable. There will probably be multiple centaurs, because sometimes they will, well, well most of the time they'll probably go back to Kerbin until we have a better solution. But there will probably only be one or two minotaurs, since, um, well, since we don't really, it's going to stay on the surface and not return. Um... But if it breaks or something, which hopefully it won't because it's pretty expensive. Um, but yeah, we can do whatever. Anyway, that is um, prepared to, you know, spend a little time in space while we return this Odin vehicle. Um, lots of uh, Greek mythology. Oh no, um, that's more Norse mythology, isn't it? Uh, Odin, isn't it? Uh, Odin and Thor. I do have um, a Thor lander somewhere, but I've forgotten exactly what it is and slash what it does, but I know I have something called Thor. Um, I think that was one of the ideas for um, for the moon base, but I'm thinking since I've picked Minotaur and Centaur, I should probably stick with Greek mythology, which is not my um, strong suit. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll just do some Googling. 
um, maybe keep a list of ship names. I know some people do that. Um, Ugh, I might actually... I was, I'm always a little... I was just checking out his recording. I'm always a little worried that I'm not recording my voice and I'm just speaking to nothing and then have to record again. But anyway, hopefully this uh, will be more successful. I have put my periaps a little lower. Um, I'd say that's some sort of re-entering path, but it's more about um, I overburned. Um, but yeah, flare the air brakes again to act as the drag of the spacecraft, which probably would be similar to the amount of drag it would get anyway. But yeah, I'm just going to return this fairly standardly. Um, I do need to put some landing legs on this, really, as you will see. Um, but yeah, basically, I'm thinking use it, I'm going to use a reaction wheel, because uh, those vernier thrusters, well, first off, they use fuel. Second off, they're heavier than a reaction wheel. And thirdly, um, the translatron can actually use a reaction wheel, whereas... Uh, where, which will be a little more effective than just gimbal. Um, but anyway, we have a little, a very little fuel, so I'm waiting till pretty much the last minute to punch the translatron. Um, yeah, there we go, one and a half kilometers above the uh, surface. And we're now descending at 30 meters per second, fairly controlled, this is looking nice. Um, and then when we get closer to about 100 meters from the surface, I'll put it to... That cut! What the hell? I landed it, um... But I didn't even cut that footage out. Yeah, okay, basically what happened, I might try and put it in like a little overlay now or something. Um, basically that landed pretty fine, but it was on a slope and it fell and broke, but we would have got the engine and one of the fuel tanks back. Um, I don't know why that cut, maybe that was just an oversight or something. Um, I, I don't know. But yeah, basically I landed it and I'll try and put it like on screen now or something, or but just, just now or sometime. But yeah, that was relatively successful, but be because it fell over, I'm thinking I need uh, landing legs. And I'm wondering what this is that I've just targeted, because that's the DKMV, which did return, so I'm thinking that's probably the service module that didn't actually deorbit, because uh, it went out of physics range. But yeah, um, so the Odin plan is looking pretty good, I'm just going to throw some uh, landing legs on there and re and replace the vernier thrusters with a reaction wheel, and uh, hopefully it'll be a much more effective uh, vehicle, at la uh, much more effective um, lander on Kerbin, I guess, um, because it did fall over, and that's a little, uh, little annoying, but we would get the engines back, which are the very expensive part, and one of the fuel tanks, and the kind of control bit, we just lost one fuel tank because it fell over, because it's quite a tall vehicle, and it landed on engines on a slope. But anyway, we're coming close to the moon now, and I've overburned again. That seems to be a thing I do a lot now. Um, so just using RCS to back off a little bit, um, to about 40 kilometers above the surface, that seems pretty good. Uh, but now I really want to see what this uh, DKMV protoship is, and it is the service module of that test vehicle I uh, used, the um, Duna Kerbin Moon Vehicle or something. Um, yeah, Duna Kerbin Moon Vehicle, basically something to go between, just do basically Kerbin Moon Duna orbits. To, you know, be the main service vehicle. But, yeah, um, it did burn up, so that is fine, because we don't want too much, uh, too much debris in our, uh, in our, um, in, in our, uh, in our lower, low carbon orbit, whereas I do have a lot, I do have a lot of debris, like, pretty much every launch I see something come within, a, like, maybe 10 kilometers of me. Um, uh, maybe one day I'll get hit by it and it'll make a very good video. Um, <laughs> Or maybe not, I'm not really sure. Anyway, we've uh, we've had some floating point error and we're a little too close to the moon. So I do a quick burn to put myself um, just a little higher above the moon. So I have a little more time for landing. Um, and this is running terribly on my end. So I'm getting like five frames a second or something. But I can still commentate. I know roughly what happened. Um, so yeah, doing our obviously just basic stuff, you know, circularization burn. Um, and then I'm going to send uh, the spacecraft down obviously separately. Um, I could probably do something with uh, the Burn Together mod and land them together, but um, given my uh, track record at landing just one spacecraft at a time, I reckon two spacecraft would be a little uh, little much. But yeah, this is the Centaur. Uh, centaur? Centaur? Whatever. Um, doesn't really matter. And this is the Minotaur. So let's uh, extend these panels, although that uh, interstage is still connected, which is uh, not fantastic, but it's connected to the uh, docking port, so I can probably decouple it just like this. And... Oh, it seems to have broken my panel. That's annoying. And, yeah, well, that sucks. It broke one of my solar panels. And for some reason, uh, the sol another solar panel on the uh, on the Centaur is also broken. But, yeah, I'm planning on replacing that solar panel with... I think there's probably one left on that trashed Morpheus in the crater near the base. So I might be able to go and grab that off there. Or just bring one on another flight of, like, a Centaur. And just attach it. Because I do want as much solar power as possible. Because... Uh, mining Keythane does take a lot of power, and this won't have enough for it, but um, still. It's only in emergencies that'll actually mine Keythane, but I think it's a very cool spacecraft. 
Um, this is, um, yeah, this is a, kind of a weird uh, design I came up with. There's a Vestra engine, the KW1, which has about 120 kilonewtons of thrust and ISP of 400 ensconced within those fuel tanks. Um, basically, so I can have as much thrust as I want without a protruding engine. Um, and those, uh, those fuel tanks on the outside aren't actually brilliantly strutted, but that is by design. Those act as suspension, um, extra, extra suspension to the landing legs. They kind of flex a bit. Not so much on the moon, but on Kerbin they flex quite a lot. Um, and I think that's just, uh, just not a, not a terrible way of, um, just, as long as they don't break, not a bad way of putting a little suspension. Anyway, my deorbit bum was kind of pretty bad. I'm not entirely sure why, just probably my positioning. Um, and we've got a little bit of a clips there, that looks kind of nice. Um, maybe that'll be the money shot. Depends what I decide to call this episode, but that may be the money shot. Anyway, um, it's time to get kind of on a trajectory after doing a little correction, which is fine because this is a basically a fuel base. Um, ha, basically a base. Um, and this has got a lot of fuel anyway. Uh, we might as well just, uh, just land. Anyway, I'm going to quickly quick load and, well, quick save and quick load just to get rid of that, uh, Annoying UI glitch in which I seem to be getting a great deal recently. Um, but yeah, skipping ahead and we're um, coming into land. It's just uh, positioning myself as well as possible and then slowing down when we get close to the base so it puts me down right at the base. And you can see that crater there with the Morpheus 5 in it, which uh, hopefully will be able to be stripped for parts if it has any parts that um, uh, a curl attachment system will allow me to remove. Um, but yeah, uh, at this trajectory, it looks like we may be joining it in that crater, and that is not what I want, because we want to be fairly close to the base, so it's not too long a walk for our poor Kerbals. Um, but yeah, now we're coming down fairly well, and I'll slow it down a in a second, just so we can land properly, and so you can see how annoyingly bad the frame rate is getting around this base. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do about that. Actually, I do. Um, I'm going to unlock RTGs so I can get rid of that moon battery, because that moon battery is... Um, a lot of parts because that's how we get through the night. But if I have RTGs, then uh, then it won't be a problem. I have been doing this series for a long time, uh, so it's like seven months now, and I still don't have RTGs. I've been taking it really slow with the science tree. It's because I spend so much time doing this kind of stuff um, as opposed to doing science. But yeah, I don't know. I prefer taking it a little slow, doing some you know fun stuff, not gunning through the science tree. And I think that kind of shows in that the series hasn't just completely died. Like, it's doing better now than ever. Although that is probably in part to my, you know, larger subscriber base. But if I'm going to keep doing it until, um, until point 24 becomes completely obsolete, given that it is the alpha and now we're in the beta. So yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, the episode, this episode 42 of Solar Civilization. I will see you next time. <laughs>